In this video I'm going to show you how to filter signals using MATLAB's built-in functions and um, I've created a script earlier on that I'm just going to run through and I'll make the script available at this website. So I have a signal X which is the signal that I'm going to filter and I'll just show you a plot of that signal first of all in the time domain. So I'll just evaluate that part of the script and we can see here this is the noisy signal and essentially it's a sinusoidal signal with noise injected into it. Um, to get a better idea of the noise uh, it'll be useful to see that in the frequency domain so I'm just going to plot the magnitude spectrum of the signal. So I'll just evaluate that section and here's a frequency domain view and we can see this component here represents the sinusoidal part of the signal whereas up here we have the noise um, part of the signal. Okay, So essentially what we want to do is to remove the noise part and leave the sinusoid on its own. Now this magnitude spectrum shows the frequency axis in terms of DFT bins but MATLAB's built-in functions use a different frequency scale and they use uh, what's known as a normalized frequency scale. And the normalized frequency scale starts off at zero but goes up to a value of one at Nyquist frequency which corresponds to the 600th bin in this case. So I'll just show you a plot of that um, normalized frequency axis. I'm just going to show the first half of the DFT. And there is the normalized frequency axis. Now just down here I have the units of the normalized frequency which are pi radians per sample. Now this isn't important to know in terms of building filters uh, but it is useful to be aware of what these numbers represent. Uh, so just up here I have uh, a value of 1 which, me, which is Nyquist frequency which also corresponds to pi radians per sample which does equate to half the sampling frequency. Um, whereas this point here would be pi over 2 radians per sample and this point here would be pi divided by 10 radians per sample. So again this isn't hugely important in terms of building the filter. The most important thing in this case is to recognize that the noise occupies a, a frequency range between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 um, units in terms of normalized frequency. Once we know these values, um, so where the noise exists, we can then go and try to design the filter using MATLAB's built-in functions. So let me just flick back to the script to show you how to do that. Um, so it's line number 28 that uh, designs the filter and I'm going to use a built-in function in MATLAB called Butter and basically uh, Butter is a function that designs a filter using what's known as a Butterworth design, design technique. Um, there are lots of different filter design techniques. There are, I'm going to show three of them in this video. Uh, Butterworth, Chebyshev and Elliptical. But all of the techniques basically work in the same way or at least all of the functions work in the same way in that they return a set of B and A coefficients uh, associated with system. And those B and A coefficients are the ones that we'll use to actually filter out um, the noise in this case. Okay, So let's just run through how the function works. Um, it, in this case it receives three parameters. The first parameter set specifies the order of the filter, so it's a second order filter. And we're going to design a low pass filter. Um, so we saw that the noise uh, occupied a set of high frequencies. So we're going to low pass the filter or the signal to remove the high frequency noise. Okay, and We're going to set the uh, cutoff frequency of the filter to being 0.3. Uh, and that corresponds to the normalized frequency. So we saw on the uh, magnitude spectrum of the signal uh, that the noise occupied a range of between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. So I'm setting the cutoff point a little bit further back um, and I'll show you that the, the, the frequency response to that system shortly. And uh, This third parameter just specifies that it is a low pass filter. We could change this to high and it would des design a high pass filter instead. Uh, again with the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter then being 0 0.3. So let me just execute that command. Now 
Now if I just go to the workspace we'll see those B and A values and so there are the B coefficients associated with this system and there are the A coefficients. And let me just show you the um, signal flow diagram associated with this system. So this uh, is a function that isn't available in MATLAB but um, I've made it available up on my WordPress site and it just shows the block diagram or signal flow diagram um, associated with the B and A coefficients that it receives. So if I pass a signal X, which in our case is a noise signal through this system, the output Y will be uh, a signal which has been low pass filtered and hopefully the noise will have been uh, removed. Okay, so let's just close that figure. And what I'd like to show you now is the frequency response of the system. So if I just scroll down, I'll show you how to calculate the frequency response. And I'm using a built-in function in MATLAB called FreakZ, which takes the B and A coefficients of a system. And um, once it's given the B and A coefficients, it determines the frequency response. And it stores in a variable H in this case. And what I'm doing down here is plotting the magnitudes of the uh, frequency response and I'm plotting it in red. Now I'm going to plot it over the magnitude spectrum of the noisy signal that I plotted earlier on just so we can compare. So let me just evaluate this, uh, these few lines. So I have here the red line showing me the magnitude response of this system and we can see that it is a low pass filter. Frequency is up to about, uh, normalized frequency up to 0 0.1 will be multiplied by 1 whereas the higher frequencies are reduced and um, the reduction becomes more significant for higher frequencies. So for example, for frequencies at about um, 0 0.6, if we were to come across, those frequencies will be amplified by uh, about 0 0.18. And um, the 0 0.3, which is our cutoff frequency, well that roughly corresponds to the 3 dB uh, point. So 3 dB uh, corresponds to uh, 0.707. So if I was to come across here, that value there should be roughly uh, 0.707, okay, which corresponds to minus 3 dB. Um, okay, so that's the filter, um, res uh, or the magnitude response of the filter uh, that was obtained by using the Butterworth filter design technique, and it's a second order filter which is has a cutoff of 0 0.3. So now let's just go back into the script and we will filter the signal. And the actual process of filtering is very straightforward. There is a built-in function in MATLAB called filter. And what you pass to the filter are the B and A values of the filter that we've designed. And we also pass the signal that we wish to filter, in this case it's X, so that's our noisy signal. And this function returns the filtered signal, and I'm storing this variable called X underscore filtered. So let's just execute that line, and we'll now plot it as well. So uh, we'll plot the signal to see what it looks like. And there we have a plot of the signal which has been filtered. And we can see that the noise part of the signal has been reduced considerably. Um, so if you compare that to the original signal, you'll see that it's quite different. Now I'd just like to zoom in closely and um, just to see how much of the noise has been removed. And we can see that there is still some noise present in the signal. So this isn't a perfect sinusoid. So there's a better example of that in fact. So you can see there's a little bit of noise left in the um, signal that's been filtered using a second order Butterworth filter. So I'd like to take another look at that and see whether we can prove the output of the filter or at least redesign a filter that will produce a better output. So we'll just move back into the script now and um, just down here I'm going to design a filter this time, uh, I'm going to leave the cutoff frequency at 0 0.3 but I'm going to use a higher order filter and we'll see what the consequences of that are. So first of all let's just evaluate that script. Okay. Now if I go back to the command window we'll see that there are lots more B and A values so I call them 
B2 and A2, so they're the coefficient names in this case. Uh, and there are 21 in this case because we have a 20 order filter. If you recall, the first time we designed a filter, we had a second order and we had three B coefficients and three A coefficients. Um, now let's just compare um, this frequency or this system with the 20 order filter uh, to the second order filter. So I'm just going to plot to figure 10, which is my um, magnitude response of the first filter and the magnitude spectrum of my signal. So let's just evaluate that. And the green signal there, or the green plot, is the is the frequency response, or at least the magnitude response, of the 20th order filter. And we can see the result of using a higher order filter reduce, results in this sharper cutoff. So we have a, a sharper roll-off or cutoff um, uh, filter basically uh, and what that has the effect of it reduces high frequencies to a more significant degree than the second order filter which we can see here in red uh, we can also see that um, low frequencies are are changed to a lesser degree up to a for a higher frequency range so the cutoff frequency is still 0 0.3 and that is that it's also called the 3 dB cutoff frequency. I can see that point matches, so that's still really set point 0.707. Okay. Let's flick back to the script, and we will take a look at the uh, output of this filter. So again, we're going to use the built-in filter function. We're going to pass the B2 and A2 co coefficients that we obtained um, above and we'll plot the filtered signal and we'll zoom in on the filtered signal and see how well the noise has been reduced in this case. So we can see it's a much cleaner signal. There is far more noise reduced which is to be expected if we were to look back at the frequency response. We can see that the noise uh, which occupies this space up here between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 has been reduced a lot because if we multiplied that signal by the the green magnitude response the noise will be reduced significantly more than for the second order filter. Now it, you should note that if I use a, an even higher order filter I will get an even sharper cutoff. Um, and I suppose the question remains then is well why don't you always just use a high order filter and basically that comes down to computational efficiency the more B and A values that you have in a system, the um, the, the longer it will take uh, for the system to process the each sample. Um, so there is a computational cost when you use a higher order filter. And while this isn't a big deal really for um, PCs, um, it can be a big deal when we're moving into designing filters and microcontrollers. There is also another consideration as well in that when you get this sharp cutoff in the frequency domain, there is a corresponding trade-off in that you get what's known as ringing in the time domain. Um, and I'm going to deal with that issue in a separate video, uh, but just be aware that there, there are trade-offs when you, you use higher order filters. Okay, so now let's just go back to the script again and I want to show you how to design a band reject filter instead of a low pass filter. So all the filter design functions that are available, so th as I said there's Butterworth, Chebyshev and Elliptical which I'll, I'll demonstrate later on, but they all have four basic filters that they can um, design. Um, they are a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a band reject and a, a band pass filter. And what I'm going to show you now is just how to design a band reject filter. And uh, a band pass filter is very similar, except you replace this stop with a pass. Now, for both the stop uh, band filters and the band pass filters, we have to supply um, two normalized frequency values rather than one because we have um, two cut off frequencies essentially and hopefully that makes sense when I run the next part of the script. So what I'm going to do is design the filter first of all just by running this command and I'm going to store the result in uh, the coefficients b underscore stop and a underscore stop so I'll evaluate that and I'll just 
plot the magnitude spectrum. Again, I'm going to use Freak Z to determine the frequency response. I'm going to plot it again to figure 10 so that we can compare. So let's just evaluate there. Okay, and we can see that this uh, cyan um, plot here is the magnitude response of the band reject filter. And the band reject or band stop filter, I specified cutoff frequencies of 0 0.8 and, or sorry, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. So I'll just go back to the script to show you that. So we have 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. And we also specified that it was a 20th order filter. So we got a very sharp um, uh, roll off rate because we used a high order filter. And um, that is how that stop on filter works. So again, what this filter is going to do is going to remove the noise and if there were any frequency components above 0 0.8, well they wouldn't be reduced so much, okay? But essentially I expect this filter to behave very similarly to the um, 20th order low pass filter. And let's just go back to the script now to plot the result. So I will just execute these lines here. And I'm using the built-in filter function in MATLAB again, I'm giving it the B stop coefficients and the A stop coefficients, which I got earlier on. And we'll just evaluate that. Okay, so there's my filtered signal. And we can see that the noise has been reduced not quite as well as the 20 dollar low pass. Now the reason for that if I go back in here is that frequencies we look at the cyan plot, uh, the frequencies wouldn't have been reduced so significantly. And I'm going to zoom in on the noise just to take a look at that. So we can see that the green, which is the frequency response of this 20th order filter, is reducing these frequencies considerably. Um, and also these frequencies up here, just above uh, or around 0 0.8, they reduce far more uh, than the cyan plot, which is the band reject filter. Okay, so that explains that. So now let's just go back to the script. Okay, now I, I had intended to um, run through designing filters with an optimum order, um, but I might leave that to another video because this one is um, dragging on a bit. And I also intended to show you uh, the difference between Chebyshev, elliptical and Butterworth filter design functions. Um, but I'll do those in separate videos. Um, again, this is just going on a little bit too long. Um, so this video really just dealt with the basics and ultimately all you need is two functions, butter and filter, to uh, filter signals. So I'll see you in the next video.